Uh, so today, I'm going to be talking about prayer, and uh, we've been going through this awesome series uh, called Journey from Faith to Fullness, and we're, t we're talking a lot about faith, we're talking about how faith and prayer, you know, we can see these amazing things happen, and we're going through some stories in Acts where uh, these guys, Paul, Peter, and a couple other guys, when they pray in faith, right, and, it, and they believe that without, and expect that God is going to work, God has a tendency to do that, and, and that's what's shown to us in the New Testament. But before I jump in today, I really want to clarify something that, that I really hope we haven't miscommunicated at all in the past uh, couple of months. We've been talking a lot about prayer and, and faith, and if you, if you just pray with enough faith, or if you just pray with the right amount of faith, or believing and expecting that God's going to work, then He's going to, every single time. But I just want to clarify, that doesn't always happen. But I also want to say that even when it doesn't, there's an amazing song, it's, it's by Mercy Me, it's, it's called Even If You Don't. It's a great song. Thank you again, Shelly. Anybody else, feel free to participate. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. So, um, and okay, spout me the lyrics, Shelly. What does it say? You don't have to sing the whole song, just what's the... Basically, even if you don't show up, I'm still going to call. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. And it's even when we're facing, we're going through fire, and we're going through all this trouble in our life. You know what, God? I believe. I know that you're able, right? I know that you can. Something through the fire and something with the plan. It rhymes. It's Jesus. Even if you don't, I'm still putting all my hope in you. I'm still putting all my trust in you. Somebody knows the lyrics. They're just not sharing it. Sorry, I'm sorry to butcher that, but that's the heart of this song. But so in these times when we can pray, and, and, and folks, I can be one of the many, I won't be the first because there's been many before me, to attest that even in praying with, okay, look, I'm just a little bit of a backstory. I'm not going to talk about it forever because I could. But the power of prayer, look, I was in, I spent a couple months in Thailand, did my DTS in New Zealand, and, and saw some cool things, man, it was, but it was hard to see fruit in Thailand. There was one specific situation, and I've shared it before, where I, where I believe I saw a Thai man healed in the hospital after praying with him, and, and all glory be to God for that. It doesn't always happen every time, right, as, as many of us know, and uh, about in December of 2015, my dad had a stroke. And he has had struggled with health problems for years, probably 10, 10 plus years. He had a pituitary tumor that was, um, it was beginning to make him blind in his left eye. And, uh, and over time, you know, he had multiple surgeries. He had his head cut open I don't know how many times. I don't know how his brain still worked after, after a certain amount of time. It was amazing. It was totally God. And then one situation where his heart, there was an artery that you only find out that you have this when you die. So like, and typically it happens with people who, you know, they're playing sports and stuff, and, and, and this, there's a malfunction with your, with your arteries in your heart. I don't know technical terms or anything. But I know that you only find out about it when you're working out really hard and you die. He was doing CrossFit for months. And was having trouble breathing, and it was just having trouble getting, getting along with that. Um, and, then they, and then went to the doctor and found out that uh, what it was and what they needed to do. So they went and did surgery, open heart surgery. And that, that man's been opened up a lot of times. The stroke happened in, in December of 2015, and it, dis, dis, it, um, it disabled him. He, they couldn't, as many times with strokes, you can take away the blood clot, or you can, there's medicine you can give that'll help take it away, and then eventually your speech will come back because he lost his speech. And the right side of his body was completely limp. It was paralyzed and, uh, from the shoulders down. He couldn't move his right arm. He couldn't move his right leg, so when he'd walk, he'd, he'd kind of like, he'd find some balance in his, in his right knee. He could do a little bit, just enough. But God gave him just enough every time to do, um, well, what God wanted him to do, not what he wanted to do. So from that point all the way up until uh, early this year, he was just, it was, it was, it almost looked like we were going up, like we were making some good progress, and it was awesome. We were loving it. And then he started going down again, and, and uh, late last year, um, or maybe it was earlier this year. No, right in the beginning of this year, we, we took him in and uh, he had an MRI and he found out he had all these other tumors growing all over his spine and in his head. And the doctor was saying he maybe had six months to a year to live. And every moment of his life 
has been, okay, granted, he's not perfect. I won't, I won't idolize him in that way. He's made a lot of mistakes. He's passed it on to me. Um, <laughs> uh, so I won't go to say that, you know, he did everything right. But man, when people, when people know my dad and talk about my dad and his funeral, I mean, we packed out Redmond Community Church. There was way more people than we had seats. It was amazing to see um, what happened. So he did pass away March 15th of this year. But every moment until his death, that was amazing to see how God worked through him. But you know what? Every moment while I was away in Thailand finding out that this stuff had started happening while I was gone, the question was, should I go home? Like, should I stay? Should I stay or should I go now? It's a song, sorry. I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. I, I knew my mom wanted me to be home, but I knew God wanted me to be there because there were things he still wanted me to do. I, mean, I was putting at risk possibility of, of not seeing my father before he died, knowing that he was going to die. But there were points, let me tell you, I have never prayed with more faith in my entire life than I prayed for the healing of my father. I prayed for complete healing for months while I was overseas, believing that God could heal him. I even had like a vision one time, God, like we were in a worship night and I, I, I felt like God just gave me a vision of everything being healed in my father. And I, I smelled smoke. I was like, Holy Spirit's burning up in here. It was awesome. Because he works in some weird ways. But he knows what we need to see and what we need to hear. So despite this vision, despite the heart that I had in believing doubtlessly, like I can't tell you how doubtless I was believing in this prayer. This doesn't happen for me all the time. I prayed, God, I believe you can heal my father 100%. That was my first mistake. None of us are 100%. So God did. He brought him to heaven. And that's praiseworthy because, because God answered that prayer in a way that I was not anticipating. But he is still good. Even if you don't heal my father, I know your will is still way higher. Your thoughts, they're above my thoughts. In your ways, they're above my ways. I can't begin to understand the reason that you do certain things. So I just, church, I felt the need to clarify, at least using my, my own personal uh, story in this time, that it doesn't happen every time. But that's okay, because God is still good. Even if you don't, my hope is still in you. Is that right, church? Yeah. And I hope that we can all come to an understanding of that while we continue to talk about prayer. And these things are important to gain fullness because what are we gaining fullness in? Somebody answer that question. What is supposed to fill us? It's okay if you get it wrong, honestly. Keep going. Love, Holy Spirit, Jesus. Anybody else? Twinkies, anybody? <laughs> No answer's wrong. We can be full of a lot of things. Some things aren't very good for us. So yes, we're going through this because we want to discover how to be full with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, the, the life that he lived. We want to live, we want him to live that through us, or we want to live um, as similar as a life as we can to Jesus. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, we've talked about being in communion with God and, and uh, being transformed by the renewing of our minds by getting into God's word. And that's how we can, be, we can begin to think more and more like Christ. And church, I gotta tell you, and I have to, I have to confess this, um, I really have been struggling reading the word every single day. I am, I'm like, I can get up here and speak, but I'm gonna be totally open and honest with you. I haven't had a very good relationship with God recently. I haven't been off and living a life of sin or, or anything like that. God's kept me safe. But I've been so distant, and I know it because I just feel, I've been feeling so empty and dry. Like, when is God gonna use me? Like, God, why can't you just, like, why can't you just speak direction in my life? Why can't you just tell me which way I'm supposed to go? For my wife and I, what are we supposed to do next? You know? Because I can't just do something on my own if God calls me there. We've got to both be called there. So I've really been struggling, church, and I need all the prayer I can get for that. Because it is hard to keep a steady, consistent Bible reading time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I know I need it. I know we all do. I can preach it even though I struggle with it because it's still true whether I do it or not, you know? Am I right? So be in prayer for me as well and all the leaders of this church. Don't ever think of us as somebody, as, as people who are constant in the word or have a beautiful relationship with God 24-7. 
chances are it probably doesn't happen to everybody. I'm sure there are some, right? But church, I want to talk about prayer, and I'm going to go through um, Acts 10, but first, um, can I do something? Bernie, could you come up and just pray for me today and just pray that God would give me the words? Um, and you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Bernie a mic, but this is not so you can hear him pray. This is not, but this is for like the building up and edification of us, right? It's not, it's not a show-off thing. I just believe this is for all of us. That's a nice shirt. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'll pray for your humility. <laughs> yeah. Holy Spirit, we've already welcomed you in this place, and mm -hmm. we thank you for being here. Father, we give you praise and honor and glory, and we thank you right now that you hear every prayer request. And we know that you do answer them, but you do, and you're sovereign. You answer them in the way in which is best for us. And I ask the Holy Spirit anointing on Zach right now, Lord, and fill him with the, yes. the words that you want him to speak, Lord. And we just know that that's exactly what's going to happen. And we give you the praise and honor and glory and your anointing on him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Awesome. Thanks, Bernie. Bless you. Bernie. Yeah, I love you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Shelly. Um, so I know you are able and I know you can sing through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow, I know the hurt will all go away if you just say the word. <laughs> but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Everybody hear that? If we couldn't hear that. Yeah, why don't you come up here? This is really important. We're gonna, we're just gonna kind of go off the beaten trail, off the beaten trail today. This is important. This song like two weeks ago and it just hit me. Yeah, it's amazing. So it says, "I know you are able, and I know you can. Say through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow, I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone." That's so cool. Wow. Church, this is something like, this lyrics to that kind of song, just like that. I would encourage you to take these home with you and pray them before you go to bed at night. Because the words of that song are so powerful. And I know for a fact that God had um, them write this song for millions and millions of people that we couldn't, we couldn't even begin to like understand how God works in those ways. Church, I hope I'm not seeming scattered this morning. I'm, I'm trying something new. Um, I, uh, I felt like God was really speaking to me the other day and, and really changing my heart on a matter. Whereas I've been speaking for a long time like in with, amongst the leaders and, and talking about, okay, we want to make sure, you know, let's, let's be as organized as possible, which is good. So we can uh, make sure that, um, but at the same time, if God wants to take it away from anywhere, like that's great, but let's just leave room for the Holy Spirit. And in my mind for so long, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that true? We want to leave room for the Holy Spirit. Yeah cool. And I, I 100% agree. But here's how God's changing my heart in this. God's telling me, I don't want you to think of it like that anymore. Because yes, my spirit needs to be there and I'm going to show up as long as you're expecting me to and you want me to. But what the Holy Spirit was telling me was that no more should I be saying, let's make sure we leave room for the Holy Spirit. But let's make this church service actually for the Holy Spirit, letting the Spirit take control of this service and do whatever He wants to in this place, and then let us be used wherever He wants to use us. And, and you know what? That might not even change how, that, how what this service looks like from week to week. I don't know. But just having that mindset allows for the Holy Spirit to work in us so much more. Do you agree? So to let this whole service and every time we come together, or you come together with um, two or more brothers and sisters in Christ in one place, let it be for the Spirit, letting the Spirit be the one who controls the moment and asking Him to let you be used whenever He wants you to. So I'm just still figuring out how to hear Him and tell me what to do next. Now, I, not that I didn't prepare. I did, I did, did prepare. Um, so the story we're kind of talking about today is in Acts 10, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try really hard uh, not to bore you, because I know we're scattered, but this is a powerful story, and I'm not gonna read the whole thing, because I don't have like a sweet, beautiful English accent. I could fake it, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be very good. But this story in Acts 10, um, 
what ends up happening is, is we're talking about a man named Cornelius. And Cornelius, um, and it says that he was a, uh, a devout man of God, right? But what Cornelius was is he's actually a Roman, uh, Roman soldier. Um, he was actually, sorry, he was an officer of the Roman army, which is higher than just the normal soldiers. And what happened back in those days is, um, if you're not familiar, let me just briefly summarize what happens in, in Acts 10 here with uh, Cornelius and, and Peter. Cornelius is, he's going about his day one day, and, and it's, uh, it's about, what is it, the uh, sixth, ninth hour, which is 3 p.m., <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what happens back in, back in those days. They counted, they didn't have clocks. So there was the third, sixth, and the ninth hour. I believe I have that correct. Um, I know there's people who correct me if I don't, so please do. So he was praying in the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. And, uh, and then this vision came upon him that was so real that he later said that the angel was standing right next to him. And what happened in this vision was, um, and I'm going to read that part for you. About the ninth hour of the day, Cornelius saw clearly in a vision, this is verse 3 in Acts 10, an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and when he is probably more like, Cornelius, <laughs> and when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continuously. And uh, when he explained these things, he sent them on their way to go and find Peter in Joppa. And, it was, uh, and I want to point out something here. Don't you just love that God gave him a vision that was specific? Don't you just wish he would do that all the time? Yeah. Come on, God. Like, if you're going to speak to me, like, give me something clear. Give me something tangible. Like, okay, uh, let's talk about Peter's uh, little trance that he fell into. And it doesn't say it was a vision. It was a trance, which um, back in Greek, it actually translates to, like, ecstasy. Um, so you think of the drug. It's kind of like you're just putting on, you're taken out of your right mind and uh, put into God's. And, and so here's what's happening while these men are on the way to, to find Peter. Peter was on the roof, and it was, uh, it was about the uh, sixth hour. Let's see, uh, that was about noon. Lunchtime, by the way. He became very hungry, this is verse 10, and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. In all, and in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth and wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, I won't, Lord, for I've never eaten anything uncommon or unclean. And the voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common or unclean. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. And then Peter's like, in verse 17, he's like, Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen uh, meant. Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made um, inquiry. Okay, so, sorry, I read too far there. What happens was these guys come up that were sent, which is one soldier and two servants that were sent from uh, Cornelius' house to find Peter. And Peter just got out of this, like, trance, okay? So he's waking up and he's like, what the heck? God, God's told me, like, all I've known for my whole life is that I'm not supposed to eat unclean animals. And now God's telling him to eat unclean animals? How many of you know that this verse is talking about God's telling us we can now eat some bacon and we'll be okay? Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what he's talking about. So can we eat bacon? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure that one out someday. <laughs> probably not the best thing we could be eating <laughs> besides the point what what was spoken to peter here he's like what just happened like he, he didn't actually know what god was trying to tell him so that's probably a lot more like what we experience on a day-to-day -day basis when we're trying to hear from god god what do you want me to do oh eat this animal <laughs> but really what i'm trying to tell you is go to a man named cornelius and preach in the gospel Jeez. 
so we're eating together? No, it's probably not what he said. So he was a little confused. And, uh, and I want to point out these two different ways that we can often get spoken to by God. One way, very clear to the point, this is what you need to do. And often, I'm going to tell you, we find that in Scripture. It'll tell us, okay, well, you're, you're, in, this, you're in this trial. You know what? You need to, um, or maybe you've sinned. Repent and, and be gone, be rid of that sin. There's a specific instruction. Sometimes it's super vague in the word. Um, and sometimes, have any of you ever, um, and this is not boasting in you, right? This is boasting in the Holy Spirit within you. But has anybody in here ever experienced like a vision that was, or, or, or an instruction from God that was very clear? God telling you what to do at a specific time. Yeah, go ahead, keep your hands up. I want to see how many people there are. Cool. Now, everybody who's, who's, who's let's say, experienced a lot of confusion, um, who hasn't really gotten a clear instruction from God. You can raise your hand twice if you want. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who didn't put up your hand, you probably should have, uh, unless you're like Elijah or something. I want to talk about three things with this prayer topic. Prayer provokes provision. Prayer provokes provision. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down because that's very important. Prayer provokes provision. Or we could call it, oh man, that was a provision provoking prayer. Okay, I want everybody to say this together and we're, we're going to try not to mess it up. We're going to have a little bit of fun with this. Okay, prayer provokes provision. Prayer provokes provision. One more time. Prayer provokes provision. Okay, this section right here, you got prayer. This section right here, you got provokes. This section right here, you got provision. Okay, you ready for this? It's going to be really fun. It's going to be awesome. Okay, ready? Prayer provokes provision. I could do this all day. I had too much fun with that. <laughs> My dad used to do like oogie oi, like, okay, you guys are oogie, you're oi, and you just clap your hands. Okay, ready? Oi. Oi. <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> you gotta be like, oogie, oi, oogie. Get it. <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> this first topic of prayer and the description of prayer, uh, what would you say, and I, I, want, I want this to be kind of really interactive, like I, I, and I want you to not be afraid, I don't want you to be timid, um, because uh, a lot of this, like, I'm, I'm going to bounce off of you. What would you describe prayer to be, or give me something that, that maybe describes prayer? Communication with God, okay. Conversation. Conversation. This side, you're missing out. Worship, Worship all right. Self-confusion? Self oh, <laughs> supplication. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Got to turn my hearing aids up. <laughs> supplication. Okay, anybody else? Need. Seeking, wisdom. Seeking wisdom. What was the other one? Need. Need? Needs? Okay, perfect. Listening. Listening, yeah. I like this. So we've got, we've really got a diversity we have communication, um, a listening, just hearing God. And, and I really think that's an important part that we often forget is when we pray, we often pray and we don't really wait for a response. We don't really allow God an opportunity to speak to us or through us. So that's why I'm saying this morning, don't stop after prayer. Like I'm really, like I get really encouraged by prayer that is out loud uh, because it's, yes, it's prayer to God, but, but we encourage, how many of you know that we encourage one another by praying for each other, laying on of hands and like just asking God to change their situation, right? That's an encouraging thing to know that somebody else is lifting you up before God. But we can't stop there. We actually have to take time to listen to what God is saying. Can we get the lights out just a little bit right in here? I've heard other people say it's too bright. I was like, get over yourself, but I understand. 
So prayer becomes more of a relationship thing than it does so much of just a one-way conversation, right? And I think there becomes a cliche where it's like, oh no, I'm not religious. I don't believe in religion. I have a relationship with Jesus. I hate religion. I love relationship. These things that, I don't know if you, have you heard that before? Like, I don't, I don't believe in religion. I believe in a relationship. But how often do we fall out of that relationship? Like myself, telling you and sharing with you guys and falling out of that relationship. And you can probably, you probably even see it today as I'm speaking. The confusion that God brings and like, I'm rambled. I feel like I'm all jumbled up, which is good. It'll work out. I was kind of thinking like, Prayer creates vulnerability, an opportunity to be vulnerable. It builds relationship, and it creates depth in our relationship. It's not just kind of a surface level. How are you feeling about the weather today? It's a deep, it's a deep intimacy that we want to have with God. And you know what? I want to, I want to bring in the example of um, husband and wife. I'm recently married, so if I get this wrong, somebody correct me, other than my wife. <laughs> just kidding. That's where I need corrected. <laughs> So what happens here in a relationship with a husband and wife? Okay, so how many of you know that men talk way too much and they just, they have too many thoughts on their mind at one time. Uh, they just, there's like your scatterbrain. You're trying to open all these compartments of your brain at one time. Men, like, how do you understand them? I don't. But let's say it was the opposite. And let's say that's the stuff that women did, okay? I just, I don't want to, I don't want to pick on anybody. I just, I want to make it open, you know? So, <laughs> so in this relationship, oftentimes, uh, let's say, as a male speaking to your wife, if you're not intentionally trying to get to know her as she is, if, if we're not trying to intentionally get to know her as she is, what she's trying to express, how she communicates, her communication styles, and believe me, I, I'm so <laughs> working on this, um, how she communicates, if we don't try and, and develop a deep intimacy and relationship with our, our wives, we can never expect to understand them the way that they're trying to speak to us. Okay? And you know what? It goes the opposite too. I'm not, I can't just pick on the men. I gotta talk about the women too. Because at the same time, men have a totally different way of communicating. And I know that's true because I'm one of them. But if the females, if, the, if, the, if, you, if wives don't, if you don't take your time to develop an understanding of how your husband likes to communicate, maybe we're talking love languages, maybe we're talking how you learn, if we don't take the opportunity to, to learn our spouse's way of thinking, we have no hope. No hope. And that's when I think things start to fall apart is when we start to give up on trying to understand our spouse's communication style. Bringing that back to our relationship with God, how many of you see the connection with that? Where our relationships with God, they cannot just be surface level. They have to actually be built off of a deep intimacy. And God desires that we get to know him. And he desires because he already knows us. He doesn't have to do anything to get to know us, right? That's why it seems like it's kind of one way sometimes. It's because God already knows our hearts. He made us. But we have to take the time and desire to, to build intimacy with Christ and the Holy Spirit so that we can know how he speaks to us because he speaks to different people in different ways. He spoke clearly a vision to Cornelius. Maybe he needed that. Maybe if he didn't get a clear vision, then, then, then God wouldn't have been able to express what he wanted to with him, right? There's a different communication style there. And if we go to Peter, Peter spent a lot of time in the word. He spent a lot of time following Jesus. And although he said no again three times in the vision, Peter's one for saying no. And um, it's just denying what God has to say. Okay, so we take that and we, we work the other way. Okay, yes, God, yes, God, I'll do what you say. That's really hard sometimes. But we have those different communication styles. Are we understanding here? Cornelius has one way of communicating and one way of understanding. God knows his heart because he's taken the time, because he created him, to understand how he best communicates, how he best understands. Okay? So with, with our spouses, if we speak the same way, if we, if we get to know them, we get to know how we should be communicating with them. Not just how we receive communication, but how we should be communicating to them so that they can understand what we're trying to say doesn't always come out the way that we'd want to be communicated with. Am I wrong? I think I'm right. I mean, I, I've got like a seven, eight, eight, seven months of experience. I think I'm, 
Got it figured out? Perfect. <laughs> I haven't learned it, but I understand. No, I don't understand. What am I saying? Um, and let's go to provoke, because prayer is a really big one. But let's talk about provoke really quickly. Prayer provokes provision. And this provoke side of things, we're talking like the dictionary definition of provoke is to give rise to, to induce or bring about, or to stir up, arouse, or to call forth feelings, desires, or activity, to incite or stimulate to action. All of these things are, are um, descriptors of, of making happen, or um, how do I phrase this? Just use the, de why would I change the definition? I'll just, to give rise to, induce, or bring about. Um, to call forth feelings, desires, and activity. So when we do these things, when we pray and we speak to God in that way, it actually provokes God. He's like, good. Now they're understanding. Now they're getting it. They're desiring a relationship with me. Therefore, I'm going to give it. So when we pray and we take that dedicated time with the Holy Spirit to get to know him more and what he wants from us, he starts to fill us with his, with his, uh, with his way of doing things. And I want to look at, um, there's a slide there for uh, Jeremiah 33, 3. And we're going to go there. And it says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Church, write down the scripture reference because this is amazing. Great and mighty things which you do not know. But what do you have to do first to get those great and mighty things? Call. Ask. Take that time. Take, go the extra mile to spend that time with God. Oh, there's so many things I want to share, but I don't have the time. Prioritize correctly in your day. If you say you don't have time to read the Bible, church, I'm, I'm in this boat too. If you say you don't have time to read the Bible, you're probably not prioritizing correctly. If you don't have time to spend time with Jesus, then your priorities are out of line. And let's go to Proverbs 2, 2 through 5 as well. Um, okay, this is a long one. This is really good. So that you incline your ear, and this is, this is, uh, this is an instruction. So that you incline your ear to wisdom and, and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as her, understandings are her because women have all of the wisdom, um, and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. But here's the key part. If you seek her as silver, search for her as hidden treasure. If you knew there was a billion dollars buried somewhere in your backyard, would you not start digging? anywhere and everywhere, right? So if we're not seeking out that, that wisdom and understanding from the Holy Spirit, as if we're like, man, we got to search for this like we're searching for buried gold. And God's going to be faithful and provide for us there. And you know what? I believe that wisdom and, and discernment is a different thing than if we're praying in faith, believing God can heal. I believe that's in God's hands and he's going to do whatever he wants and whatever time he wants there. I believe he can. But when it comes to discernment and wisdom, I know James talks about um, if just ask and believe that you will receive the wisdom that you ask for and it will be given to you. So wisdom's different. I believe that that actually comes if you, if you pray in faith and ask God for it. Last verse, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And this is about the peace of God. And I think most people have got to know this first. Be anxious about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace which surpasses all understanding, not just some of the understanding, but all of it, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Do you want to be guarded with Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit? When you're facing anxiety, because I know that's a problem for a lot of people, and it's a struggle, it's real. When you're facing these things, are we, are we giving it to God and, and believing that he can transcend everything that we have and bring it at his feet and transform it for us? So we've talked about prayer. We've talked about what it provokes when we pray, but let's talk about provision. And the dictionary definition for provision is, if you didn't already know, something provided. <laughs> A measure or other means for, get, for meeting a need. Okay, that's a key word right there. For meeting a need. Did it say for meeting a want? Come on, church. Did it say for meeting a want? No, no, it said for meeting a need. We don't always know what our needs are. We just think we do. 
So if we begin to doubt God because he doesn't provide the things that we think we need in the way that we think we need them in the time that we think that we need it, if you, if you kind of catch my drift, it's not about us, it's not about our wants, but we have to understand that God will provide these things after we pray, right? It provokes God's provision, but he's only gonna provide the things that he knows we need, not the things that we think we know we need. Am I making sense? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's not, that's not for me, I just wanna make sure that you're understanding. <laughs> and I think, and I didn't put this up here, but I just love the peas. We're on a roll with these peas, okay? So prayer provokes provision, but it also provokes a power. It also provokes a power. And church, I felt that this building, like I, I genuinely felt that the Holy Spirit was doing amazing things in this building when people were praying together yeah. out loud because there's something powerful about coming together in one heart and one mind, worshiping God for who he is and addressing our needs, bringing our needs before him or what we think our needs are, right? He'll determine it from there. And the power that comes out of that is so, so good. That's what brings fullness. Church, is when we spend time with God, when we spend time in the Word, when we spend time building an intimacy with the Holy Spirit so that we can begin to grow in our understanding and knowledge of what He wants to speak and how He likes to speak to us, that's where power comes from. That's how we get to fullness. And if you can make complete fullness before the day you die, bravo. But there's a lot of distractions in this world. I'm finding that I'm spending too much time on my phone and I'm realizing, whoa, every time I go to read my Bible, I like pick up my phone and check, or you know, I've got any messages, waiting on something. I've got a lot of stuff I need to do, God. This is this stuff, you know, preparing for um, an event at the church, like, okay, well, God, this is your stuff, so I'm just gonna take a moment here and break and talk to you. But my mind is completely erased from what it is that God wants me to do. So church, as I work on this, I pray that you would come with me and work on this as well. And I want to put up our experiment for this week. Oh, we didn't put it up there. It's in the bulletin. Um, can I see one of those, please? I, I know that it's uh, taking the time to uh, pray. Faith experiment. So what I want you to do this week is I want you to develop your ability to put aside unnecessary things and replace it with intentional one-on-one -on -one time with God. Listen for his voice and learn to know what he sounds like and the ways that he moves in you. Pray expecting and believing that he will have some sort of response. And you know what? If he doesn't respond the same way that you are hoping him to, it doesn't change who he is. Nothing about God's character changes. Thank you. If he doesn't respond the way that we want him to. Church, do you accept this challenge? Yes. yes. Church, do you <laughs> accept this challenge? Yes. yes. Now, if you said yes and you didn't actually mean it and you didn't actually think about possibly some ways, yes, I definitely want to do this, um, take back your yes and say yes later until when you figure it out. Okay, you don't have to take it back out loud. But church, highly, <laughs> I highly encourage you to, uh, to take this on and, and test God. Put God to the test by doing these things and see what he does. I, spoke, I, I said this a couple weeks ago, but 100% of prayer is not prayed. Don't get answered. Kind of off of Wayne Gretzky's little quote. Church, let me pray for you. Dear Lord, God, I want to come before you in awe of who you are. I don't want to come before you not picturing your power and not acknowledging how sovereign you are in my life. I don't want to just ask you to fill needs in my life without waiting and listening to see what you have to say. God, I pray that you would move like fire, just ablaze in this church in Jesus' name, that you would let this last beyond today. And like we say, and it's become a cliche, but I don't want it to be, don't leave this at church. When you walk out a different door, Lord, I pray that we would fall at your feet in every moment, no matter what that looks like. And Lord, you know how we need to hear you and you know the ways that we do hear you. And it's an amazing thing when you speak to us. And in those times, I pray we'd celebrate and remember the things that you've done for us. And in Jesus' name, amen.